Welcome to video number 35 of Reading Comprehension Skills. Today we're having a scientific passage with more than one question. Do you feel hot? Let's find out how we feel hot. The human body creates a lot of heat. In addition to that, which we create by running or jumping, we constantly use energy on involuntary functions such as blinking or blood circulations. These types of processes must go on at all times in the body, without our control, even during sleep. But unlike reptiles, which use only outside sources to heat and cool their bodies, mammals maintain a consistent temperature. Therefore, heat must be controlled, be the source from the outside environment or from our own bodily functions. The body disperses heat into the air by exhaling warm, humidified air and by evaporating sweat. The evaporation of sweat cools both the skin and the blood in the vessels beneath it. This blood then returns to your core, cooling your internal body temperature. These processes work best when the ambient temperature is around 70 degrees. It begins to become less efficient when the temperature starts to match our core body temperature of 98 degrees. It also doesn't work well when the humidity in the air rises, since the rate of evaporation slows down. That's when you begin to feel hot and uncomfortable. The first question, based on the information in lines 2 to 4, Another example of an involuntary function performed by the human body could include. If you look at line 2, it's mentioned involuntary functions, such as blinking or blood circulations. And then comes the definition. These types of processes must go on at all times in the body without our control, even during sleep. Can you control eye blinking? No. Can you control blood circulation? No. So what is the function or what is the process that you cannot control whether you are awake or asleep? Chewing, walking, breathing, sniffing, eating. Actually, the answer here would be C. Why? Because we are talking about a function that cannot be controlled by humans, even if they are awake or asleep. The second question says, the author mentions reptiles in lines 4 to 5 in order to. Let's read here, but unlike reptiles, which use only outside sources to heat and cool their bodies, mammals maintain a consistent temperature. So when we use the word unlike, this is a tool of using contrast. This is a tool to show differences. Um, so, what is the difference between reptiles and mammals here? It's the way they use sources to heat or cool their bodies. So, um, reptiles use only outside sources to heat and cool their bodies, which means that mammals can use outside or bodily uh, functions to heat or cool their bodies. The answer here would be D. Let's check why the other answers are not fitting. A, explain the difference between reptiles and insects. Actually, no mention about insects was in the text. B, suggest that humans and reptiles share many evolutionary traits. First, we are not talking about evolutionary traits. The second thing, the word unlike is not to show what they share. It's to show what they are different in. C, emphasize the importance of temperature regulation for all living things. We are not talking about all living things. We are talking about reptiles and mammals, and we are comparing both to show the contrast, to show the difference between them. Um, and then we said that the answer is D. Let's look at E. Imply that reptilian temperature regulation is superior to that of humans. Actually, we didn't uh, say which is better. And it's here the comparison to show the um, types of sources to cool or heat the body. Next question. The core described in line 10 is most analogous to the body's 
what? When we say the word the analogous, it means similar, something that is compared to, to show similarity. So let's read here the, uh, in the second paragraph. The body disperses heat into the air by exhaling warm, humidified air and by evaporating sweat. The evaporation of sweat cools both the skin and the blood in the vessels beneath it. This blood, which blood? The blood that was cooled by the evaporation of the sweat, then returns to your core, cooling your internal body temperature. Ask yourself, where is the body? Is it an outside organ or inside organ of the body? Actually, it's an inside. And it returns to your core, so to your internal body. What is the word that could be here analogous to the word internal body? Yes, it's center. Next question, and it's another vocabulary question. As used in line 12, the word ambient most nearly means. Look at this uh, paragraph, the last paragraph. These processes work best when the ambient temperature is around 70 degrees. It begins to become less efficient when the temperature starts to match our core body temperature of 98 degrees. So the ambient temperature if it goes to 98 now, it's not efficient. So what about the word ambient? Is it the uh, temperature outside or inside the body? Actually, it's outside the body. So which word can go for this meaning? It's C, surrounding. What about the meanings of the other words? Stoic means enduring. Botanical, anything related to plants. Fictitious means imaginary or unreal. Punctilious means caring about details. Then comes the tricky question, the last one, which is based on the whole text. All of the following statements can be inferred from the passage except. So something you look for as not mentioned, not even uh, concluded from the passage. To reduce energy costs, air conditioning systems should be turned on only when the room's temperature rises above 70 degrees. B. Heat is a byproduct of work being done by the body. C. Because of the nature of our body's temperature control mechanism, we need a cooler ambient temperature for it to function optimally. D. Humidity has a significant effect because it interferes with the evaporation of sweat. E. Humans living in cooler climates have less efficient body temperature controls than those who live in warmer climates. So what we are going to do is to take each of the choices and find out whether it was stated directly or even in concluded from the passage, and then we cancel this choice. We would um, just have to find out the choice that is not mentioned directly, that is not even concluded from the passage. If you look at choice A, to reduce energy costs, air conditioning systems should be turned on only when the room's temperature rises above 70 degrees. Actually, this is directly mentioned here in the last paragraph when it says the process work best when the ambient temperature is around 70 degrees. And we said that the ambient here means the surrounding temperature. So if it's less than 70 degrees, we are fine. We don't feel uh, hot. But if it's more than 70 degrees, we start to feel hot. That's why we need to um, uh, turn on the um, air condition systems only when the room temperature rises above 70 degrees. And the room temperature here means the surrounding temperature. B, heat is a byproduct of work being done by the body. Is it a byproduct? Is it a product that is um, produced with other things? Actually, yes. And it says here in line one and two, in addition to that which we create, that here refers to the heat. 
which we create by running or jumping, we constantly use energy on involuntary functions such as blinking or blood circulation. So yes, we do produce heat as something beside the, the other functions. C, because of a nature of our body's temperature control mechanism, we need a cooler ambient temperature for it to function optimally. Actually, we have two evidence here that this is mentioned in the passage. We have a line five, mammals maintain a consistent temperature, and this is our temperature control mechanism. And then we have the same part of um, the last paragraph when it says that um, it begins to become less efficient when the temperature starts to match our core body temperature of 98 degrees. So we need, yes, we need a cooler ambient temperature for it to function optimally, to function effectively, if it's more than 70. So A, B, C are excluded because they have been mentioned or concluded from the passage. Then look at D. Humidity has a significant effect because it interferes with the evaporation of sweat. Actually, these are the last two lines in the passage. It also does not work as well when the humidity in the air rises since the rate of evaporation slow down. So the humidity causes the evaporation of, of sweat to slow down. So the only one that was not mentioned actually, and no comparison was mentioned about locations of people is uh, E. Humans living in cooler climates have less efficient body temperature controls than those who live in warmer climates. Actually, the most important evidence that this is a wrong piece of information is that we said that mammals maintain a consistent temperature regardless of the place of those mammals or those humans. So the answer here would be E. I think by the end of the video, we, we've learned uh, when we should turn on the AC system. Thank you for watching and don't forget to send all your questions and feedback on English for fun, English skills at gmail.com. And until we see each other in a new reading video, best of luck.